This message is a continuation of the message that was presented during the watch night service. And if you missed it, you can find that message on Antioch Christian Church underscore two Facebook group. And you can go to YouTube and you can search for the regal word and be blessed by what God did in this place last night. This is a continuation of that message that was limited because of the midnight hour. But there were some things that could have took us way past the midnight hour. But I wanted to give everyone an opportunity to say Happy New Year. But that Happy New Year has come and we should be in the full swing of things now. The honeymoon is over. That first hour of 2023 is past. And we've got to focus on what God has in store for us in 2023. And I want you to know that God wants us to change our approach. Isaiah 43, beginning at verse 16, the New International Version reads as follows. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and there they lay, never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Amen. Thus ends the reading of God's holy word. You may be yes. seated. Amen. Last night, I don't believe that I gave you a subject for the sermon. You can derive the subject when you listen to it or look back at your notes. But today, I want to give you a subject. I want it to be very clear on what God requires of us. The subject today on this first day of the year 2023, which so happens to fall on a Sunday, is for you to pick up the pace. Pick up the pace. The pace that helped you get to where you are right now, it's not the pace that's going to bring you to your tomorrow. God wants you to know that everything that you did up to this point, it was sufficient to a certain extent to get you to your right here and now. And the reason why I say it was sufficient to a certain extent to get you to your right here and now, because if you were honest about how much effort you put in to your living, you will admit that you fall short. You will admit that you really got to where you are right now because of the grace, mercy, and blessings of the Lord. Some of us think of tomorrow as a dawning of a new year or the dawning of a new day. But God does not define your tomorrow that way. Your tomorrow as defined by God is you becoming the person which God meant you to be, and to get there when God wants you to get there, and it requires you to pick up the pace. I don't know how many people caught that. I'm inclined not to repeat it, but for those who were looking at the Bible, for those who were thinking about something else, I want you to know that God does not define your tomorrow the same way you define it. You define your tomorrow about what's going to happen on your birthday, which is in the future. You define your tomorrow as to when you're going to be allowed to take vacation and go off on your own for two weeks or more. You define your tomorrow about momentous events, the uh, anniversaries, and so forth and so forth. But that's not how God defines your tomorrow. 
God defines your tomorrow about how much energy you are putting in your life today to bring your tomorrow into your present. Yes, yes, yes. And some of us take too long to get where God wants us to get to. You think that the race is a a long-term marathon and the finish line is in the distant future. God wants you to know that the race is daily. Every day, God in his mind has an expectation when you close your eyes for the night, there's some place God wanted you to be. And the question to the Christian is, are you getting to the point by the time that you close your eyes, that meets at God's expectation and not yours. Amen. And if the answer to that question is why the time you go to sleep tonight, or let's focus on 2022 for a moment, all of those 360 some odd days you had in 2022, every night that you went to sleep, do you feel like not only did you accomplish your goal, did you accomplish God's goal for your life? And if the answer to that question is that you find yourself slacking, God wants you to know he's not going to have the same patience with you in 2023 that he had with you in 2022. God's message to you today is you better pick up the pace. Why else should we pick up the pace? Isaiah chapter 43, verse 19 says, See, I am doing a new thing. Oh, let me say that again. God is saying, See, I am doing a new thing. And some of us can't even see what God is doing. Because our minds and our focus is on something else. And quite often that something else that we are focused on is not God anyway. So you're missing the point that God is doing a new thing. Now it springs up. I love those people that says, oh, yeah, God's got promises for me in the future and he's going to do this and he's going to do that. Your focus is wrong. You're you're so focused on what he's going to do for you in your future. You are missing what God is doing for you now. You are missing what God is about to do for you right now. And you say, oh, I can't see what God is about to do for me right now. You're a liar. And here's why you're a liar. When the spring comes and you go by trees and you see buds on the tree, you don't see flowers. You don't see full grown leaves. You see buds. But when you see the buds, you know what is about to happen. How many of you are walking in your life looking for the buds that gives you indication of the new thing that God is getting ready to do in your life? You're so busy crying about what you didn't have and what you didn't get. And God is springing up buds in your life, letting you know and giving you a sign of the thing to come. And you're not even seeing it. God is doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it, he says. I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. God is doing a new thing. And some of you might say, well, what is the new thing that God is doing? God is bringing about change in your life. And God is going to bring about that change in your life, even if you don't want the change to come. God is tired of you slacking and not picking up the pace. So God is saying in 2023, it's not going to be the same as it was in 2022. I'm not going to let you get away with it. I'm going to show you there's a sense of urgency where you need to pick up the pace. And because you have shown yourself as rigid and not so flexible and not so adaptable and not wanting to be led by God, 
God. God said to you, guess what? I'm going to change things right underneath your feet and you're going to have to change or you're going to die. God is going to change some things in your life, whether you want it to happen or not. Just like the parent brings change in a child's life because it's not sufficient for that child to stagnate and say, stay at the same level. God is the same way. He's the consummate father. And he has looked in the book of your lives and he said, enough is enough. And I'm doing a new thing and I'm bringing about change. You have to keep pace with what God is doing. God is releasing people and told them to run away. And they're walking slowly. Some people have been praying for deliverance. Some people have been praying for a loved one. Some people have been praying for change in their life. And God comes down from on high. And he breaks the chain that held you prisoner to whatever situation or circumstance existed in your life or in your child's life. And when he released you, he said, run away. And some people look at the chains and stand there while the enemy has just discovered that the chains have been broken and has released all hell on earth to reclaim what God has set free, and they're moseying along. And God told them to run away. God wants to bless people. But the past blessings that God rained down on them haven't changed them. Do you not realize that God blesses you not to make you feel good. God blesses you not to cause you to feel special. God blesses each and every one of us to change us. You think God is putting money in your pocket and giving you houses and lands and giving you promotions and taking you out of situations and, and strongholds that had built up and hemmed you in, you think that God just, just blessed you for you to be free and to walk around like you're in a state of nirvana? God blessed you to change you. How many of you, when you are blessed, Understand that God is trying to change something about you. He's trying to change your understanding. He's trying to change your approach. He's trying to change how you speak. He's trying to change how you see. That is why God blesses you. Because he wants you to change. People want new blessings. They say, God, bless me, bless me, bless me. They want new blessings. And they don't want to change. God has blessed you in your past. And you have not changed as a result of those blessings. And you're still saying, God, give me more. And not only give me more, give me new. God wants you to know that you need to pick up the pace about your change. Because if you don't pick up the pace, God has a scripture that shows that if you don't change, you won't be blessed. If you don't change, don't expect new blessings from God. Oh, you're looking at me cross-eyed like I just grew a, I look strange to you by that comment. Well, let me give you a scripture so you will see me as I am and not as the strange person who's uttering some strange words to you. How about that? Matthew chapter 9, verse 17 says, Nor do they put new wine in old wineskins, or else the wineskins break, and the 
this wine is spilled and the wineskins are ruined, but they put new wine into new wineskins and both are preserved. See, God is not going to waste blessings. He's not going to give pearls to swine. God is not going to waste blessings because there's too many people in this world who need to be blessed. So if you want to stay stuck on stupid if you want to, and you want to keep thinking God is going to bless you with some new blessings and you have not changed, guess what? When God is walking, distributing blessings, he's going to pass you by. You better pick up the pace. You better pick up the pace. What do I mean by picking up the pace? God expects you to change the way you speak. He expects you to change the way you walk. He expects you to change what you see and what glasses you are using to see. And God is expecting you to change your thoughts because everything else you could change. But if your thoughts don't change, then guess what? Your heart doesn't change and everything else will pass away. But your spirit in your heart will remain. And that is what God is going to hold you by. That is what he's going to hold you accountable for what's in your heart. You want new blessings. You want to change your life, then pick up the pace. Pick up the pace, and as you do so, change may even enable you to pick up the pace. If you change, it'll help you pick up the pace. If you're carrying a thousand pounds on your back because you're remembering what happened yesterday, the scripture said, forget the form of things, right? You are, th you are weighing way down with a thousand pounds because you remember and haven't forgotten what happened to you yesterday. Some person hurt you when you was 15 and 20 and you 40, 50, 60 years old and that same thing is weighing you down. If you would just change, you would be free and when you're all of a sudden lighter, you could run faster. You could walk faster. You could think freely instead of being weighed. Why don't you just change so that you could release some things that God wants you to release? Let me tell you, in 2023, God don't want you to bring the same burden that you had in 2022 into 2023. God wants to liberate you, but you got to be liber liberated by liberating yourself first. Pick up the pace. Pick up the pace. That sounds like a song. Pick up the pace. Pick up the pace. Changing may help you and enable you to pick up the pace. Now, don't go home and tell your wife or your husband they playing a song in your... You, and you got the words all wrong. You just saying, pick up the pace. Pick up the pace. God wants you to sing that in your spirit for all of 2023. You know the Bible says when you wake up to sing hymns and psalms and pray. Well, for all of those who were struggling to find a song for 2023, I just gave you one. Pick up the pace. Pick up the pace. Let's get serious. Because God said he's doing a new thing, but where did he say he's doing it at? He didn't say he's doing it in heaven. He didn't say he's doing it in a place where everything is right. He said he's doing it in a wasteland and a wilderness. How many of you know we are living in a wasteland and a wilderness? Only the people who sit high and who are manipulating things and think that they had a great 2022, they don't see that we're actually living in a, 
in a wilderness, in a wasteland. Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, God said, we're to walk circumspectly in the world. Amen. Would he tell you to work, walk circumspectly in a place where everything is okay? Doesn't when he say walk circumspectly imply that there's danger? Yes. The Bible lets you know that we are living in the last days and we are actually in an environment that is a wilderness and a wasteland. Oh, you don't believe it. The world is a wasteland. It's contaminated and it's corrupted. You could start with politics, with people claiming to be who they are not, and then they get found out because don't you know, every lie gets discovered. What's done in the dark will be found in the light. You could look at the public school system and the private school system. Oh, you say it's not corrupted? Look at what they're teaching our children. How can you take facts and recreate the facts to state something that never happened. Amen. There should be no group of people on the face of the earth that has to go and discover their history. The history books should tell history exactly as it happened. And for those who would be ashamed because history exactly reports what has transpired, they need to pick up the pace and change and act right so that their future doesn't show a history of the same old thing. Amen. Amen. The world is corrupted. It's contaminated. You go and you try to eat fish and all of a sudden your mercury levels go through the roof. They take the nutrients out of things because they're engineering food instead of going back to the old way and just setting aside large portions of land. Instead, they want to build buildings and build all of these things when if you simply did right and you set aside land to grow and nourish the population. Oh, you're still not convinced that the world is contaminated. And why are so many people coming down with all of these diseases that we didn't hear about years ago? Yeah. Oh, you think that cancer and all of this stuff is new? Don't you know the world is contaminated because of man's disobedience? The world is contaminated because God said, here, you are in charge of the world. And men showed themselves unworthy to the task because they valued self and money than they valued the health yes. of their yes. brothers and sisters. Yes. Yes. The world is contaminated because man failed. And let's not get it twisted. There's not only men who are in high places with power. There are women who are mothers, who have a responsibility for nurturing children, and they are doing things that are not nurturing to other people because of selfish gain. I would be here a long time if I just rattled off the top of my head all of the reasons why the world is contaminated and is a wasteland. For those who live in New York, go jump in the Hudson River. Who in their right mind is going to jump in water where you can't even see the bottom? Because there are waters on the face of this earth that God has protected, and you can look and you can see clearly to the bottom of the waters. It's only where populations exist that they say, oh, this waste, guess what? Throw it in the water. And they don't understand how it contaminates the entire food chain and compromises the health of every human being on the face of this earth. The earth 
itself is becoming a wasteland and it is a wilderness. But what did God say? Let's go back to the videotape. He said, I'm making a way in the wilderness. Anyone and no one has an excuse to be lost in this world. God has provided his word. He has provided righteous people who are living right, talking right, walking right through the aid of God and the Holy Spirit and other righteous people in Christ. And God is making a way in the wilderness, just like he made a way for the Israelites who came to the river and said, there's no way for us to pass. And God said, I'm going to make a way for you. Moses said, be still and see the power of the Lord. See, sometimes you can't run so fast in the direction you think you're supposed to run. That's why the Bible says, be still and know that I am God. When you're making your way through this wilderness that we live in, just because the scripture says God is making a way, don't always think that the spirit in you that you hear is the spirit that is telling you where to go. Because that spirit just might be you thinking more so than the true spirit that lives in you that's directing you. And that's why you have to be still sometimes before you make a decision. You have to be still sometimes before you lift up your foot to climb a step because you don't always know where that ladder leads you to. In 2023, be warned. God is making a way in the wilderness. But as you pick up the pace, Pace, don't move so fast that you watch the signs of God that direct you. God says he is making a stream in the wasteland. Even though everything is corrupted, contaminated, if you walk by sight, you think that God is creating a stream of fresh water for you to drink. You think that God is creating a stream for you from a career perspective so you can get elevated and make more money. You think that God is creating a stream in the church known as a ministry that if you take head of that ministry, you will be exalted in the church. That's if you're walking by sight. But if you're walking by faith, then you understand that the stream that God is creating is a stream of righteousness and sanctification and justification and perseverance in your life that culminates you existing. I love it when the Bible says, you shall live and not die. You shall live and not die in the wasteland because God is at work. That's the only reason why in a terrible 2022 where you look at every day in the news, young people are dying at ferocious numbers. That's why in the church there's more burials and funerals than there are infant dedication and marriages. We have to understand that we have to walk by faith and understand that the stream that God is providing us is a spiritual stream because the physical doesn't lead the spiritual. The spiritual leads the physical. Yeah. In the midst of this wilderness, in the midst of of this wasteland, God wants you to pick up the pace. And you pick up the pace by reading your word. Some of you could probably count on maybe two hands and a foot. How many times in 2022 
you actually sort out the word of God by opening your Bible on your own. Mm. And not because you heard a sermon or not because the pastor gave it to you. Amen. You had idle time and you decided to open up your word and seek God. Reading the word of God is not enough. God wants you to study the word. There's no child that I know or no college student that I know that goes to school and read the textbook and gets an A on the test. You have to study. And when you study, you know how to live. When you study the sins and the taste of things that are not of God will begin to wane because your relationship with God becomes stronger and your love of God becomes stronger and you begin to want to satisfy God instead of another human being. Some of you are not even living to satisfy your own selves. Some of you are living to satisfy another man or woman, and that is not the way that God wants you to live in 2023. God wants you to not satisfy yourself or satisfy or be yoked or yield to any other man or woman. God wants you to be yoked to him because when you are yoked to him, God is like a chariot of fire that has knows exactly where it's going in the wilderness, in the wasteland. And if you would only jump on the wagon by extending and growing your love and your relationship with God and get on the wagon, God will see you through. You're not going to get through this thing by yourself. It's too dangerous above, below, to the left, and the right of you. You must get on not the bandwagon, but the chariot of fire that is God, because it will burn and forge its way through this wilderness and this wasteland that we exist in. And when you jump on the bandwagon, that's not going to do anything for you. But when you jump on God's chariot of fire, then your children might stop dying. Your loved ones might stop dying. You you might stop being persuaded to do things you know you shouldn't be doing. Amen. Amen. Begin to apply the word of God to your life and be faithful in your living and do good works. Some people want to save themselves and jump on the chariot of fire and see everybody else dying by the wayside. When you're on God's chariot of fire, you better hold on with one hand and you ought to be reaching and throwing people onto the chariot of fire, saving somebody. Do these things in 2023. And as Philippians 4.19 says, and my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus as you pick up the pace. God bless you. God keep you. Heaven smile upon you. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray for each and every one of you. Amen.